All we wanna do is party and bullshit and make sure that we have a good time. Yeah, uh, it's a Liddy Talk. Welcome to the motherfucking Liddy Talk. We talk shit and get drunk on the Liddy Talk. We talk about our hot topics on the Liddy Talk. Yeah, uh, the Liddy Talk. We ain't scared to talk about it on the Liddy Talk. We have fun and talk news on the Liddy Talk. Where else, nigga, can you get a Liddy Talk? Okay, 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 what's up, Willie? Man, it's been a minute, man. No, dog, it's been a minute, man. Good to see you. Good to hear from you. I'm glad you on. You cranked it back up. Yeah, man. I man, like this is this is the beginning. Tell me, you feel me? Give you a second. You are gonna crank it back up? And you a real one, dog. You came back for. Me. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you said it, bro. I'm glad nah, you said it. Bro. You can't. Hey, <laughs> nah, dog, Liddy, man. First off, before we do anything, before you could even start the interview, right? I just want to start off with gratitude. You know what I'm saying? Like that night, you probably don't even remember because you know. Four years but ago. That night, uh, in front of Stoby, right? Yeah, four years ago. You no know, interview, right? Yeah. And then you was. Oh, I think his internet cut off. Hold on. Hold on. We back. You hear me now? Oh, yeah, I got you. I got you. My bad. I thought you got kicked out. Okay. Yeah, so I was saying, out in front of Sobe, you, you, you called me a legend, right? You know what I'm saying? And like at the time, I was, you know, because when you're in it, you don't really, but you call me a legend, and that kind of like stuck in my head. I was like, damn. And then um, a previous time before that, I don't know if you're familiar with Shula the Dom, the video director. Yes. We was in PTs, and he said the same thing. So y'all was the first two people to kind of put it out there. And this was a couple years ago, you know what I mean? And then now, you know, as they talk about my name, they throwing that, 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 that legend word around. So I just want to salute to you, man, because you was one of the first. A while ago, you don't even remember that, but it's stuck in my head, bro. So I appreciate you. I remember it like it was yesterday, bro. That was Bar Idol, bro. I remember that 24, uh, shout out to 24. Yeah. He told me. And I was doing, you know, I've been doing my homework because that was when I first started getting into the team, but I, I did my homework around. Okay. So, you know, people do have diff different, you know, there's this whole thing about now legends. They, they, you know, some people would take offense to it, some people would take offense to who you call a legend. And everybody has a different opinion on it. What I meant by it is like your grind, bro. People don't understand. Like some people don't see what it takes to get to a certain place. Fact. You know what I'm saying? So like they just they sometimes people will just like put you in a in a category because of what they see on the face value, but they won't do the homework to actually see what you have gone through, what you have been through, what you have put into it. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. Real talk. So that's that's why when I sat with you that day. I'm like, man, this, this you're legendary to the way you fucking work. So if anybody got a problem with it, my bad. Like, okay, nah. then, <laughs> you know, that's, that's your problem. You know what I'm saying? But nah, um, absolute, so, man, I appreciate that, man. You was one of the first, though, man. So when it's all said and done, just just know, man, you was the first to salute the accolades. Appreciate it, bro. And I, like I said, I did my homework. I know, and, and, and we'll start off. I mean, you came from, you know. Hanging with Pistol P, Fat Joe, um, um, you know, yeah. uh, Level, yeah. um, you know, back, I mean, back, 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 back in the days. If y'all don't know, DJ Killer K has been really grinding, right. like grind, yeah. grind. And like, you're one of those people that like, you have a history of something. Like, you're one of those people that are behind the scenes, but in front of the scene, but at the same time, they got to they gotta really dig and see what you really have put in and how how hard you've worked per to get where you're at today. Perfect description. I feel like a, I feel like an offensive lineman. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they really, you know, they don't get no credit though. You get me? You never right. know who they look like. But if they don't, if they not on point, shit not moving. You know what I'm saying? Man. So that's a, perfect, that's a perfect description, bro. I appreciate you. Man, listen. So you're a certified personal fucking trainer. I mean, we're gonna get into all those things, but um, before we get into anything. Yeah. Born, born and raised in Miami, where in Miami? Okay, so look, so this is the um, 
this is the trick. Not even the trick, but I'm going to put you up. I wasn't born in Miami. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I've lived here my whole life, though. I was originally born in New York. I was born in um, I was born in Queens. Okay. Mary Immaculate. You know what I mean? You know, my, my, my parents, you know, they're Jamaican. You know, that was the, uh, back then, that was, you had three places. It was either Miami, New York, or Toronto, right? When they was coming over. Correct. So uh, my mom, you know, from Jamaica, um, landed in Toronto. They went to New York, and then she had me. Um, probably when I was maybe like five years old, I moved to Miami. So really, and you know, I'm 40 plus now, so I've been here really my whole life. Um, when we moved down here, I lived in, uh, man, I'm, I'm Miami to the heart, bro. I don't think it's a place in Miami I haven't lived. But uh, elementary school, North Bay Village. I don't know if, you, if you're familiar with North Bay Village. It's right there in between, if you want to say, Little Haiti and the beach on 79th Street. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Bridge. And then it's that little, yeah, it's North Bay Village. That's why, um, and then from there, I moved to Kendall. So I was in Kendall for a while. I went to Sunset, Miami Sunset. I went to uh, Robert Morgan. Uh, I was in Kendall for, for a minute from Kendall. I moved, at, that's, you know, that's, that was high school for the most part. Then I went to college. I went to Bethune-Cookman, Daytona. Uh, I went to TCC, Tallahassee Community College. Uh, did the whole college thing and then come back out. I moved back to Miami and ended up moving to uh, Liberty City. So I was in Liberty City for maybe about three, four years. From Liberty City, I moved to Miami Gardens. So I was in Miami Gardens for maybe a year and a half. Uh, and right now I'm presently in Hollandale. Right. So you know, I done, yeah, I done been a little bit of everywhere in Miami, man. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do, you got, do, you, uh, do you got a back tattoo, like a big one or no? Do I say it again? Do I got a what? A back tattoo, like a tattoo on your back? Yeah, I do. I got, I got, I got Buddha on my back. Oh, I got Sadat. I was gonna say, if you, if you didn't have that, you should have got like the whole state of Florida on your back. I should have. That, that's like got, your whole but, story, bro. But I, I got Dade County on my forearms. You feel me? <laughs> and I got Miami right here, so you know I'm rep. <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, how was it growing up? I mean, I mean, you got so many different stories in so many different towns. So like, any, anything memorable? that you can speak um, I, I guess there'll be so many stories anything memorable <laughs> yeah i just i just i just put i just put it all together man like i just say growing up in miami kind of prepared me for the world you know what i'm saying like being being uh so many different cultures you know it's like a melting pot you feel right, me so i right. feel like like it's not nowhere in the world i can't go right where i feel like i'll be okay i know how to maneuver i know how to growing up in Miami. Right. You know what I mean? So every, every but you know, you, I, I got plenty of stories, <laughs> man, from like, from, from um, Richmond Heights um, on Tyler Street. My dog had a studio. That's where I was, you know, kind of putting my first mixtapes together. Um, uh, DJ Ideal, I don't know if you're familiar with Ideal and EFX from back in the day, when they had a studio downtown, I was there putting mixtapes together. I mean, I got so many stories, but I just, I just sum it all up as Miami growing up, man, being that it was a melting pot, it kind of prepared me for the world. So I'm just thankful, yeah. you know what I mean, to be able to to grow up in Miami. A lot of people take it for granted, but, you know, I'd have been other places. And, boy, it ain't nothing like the crib. <laughs> as much as the motherfuckers hate it and they talk about crabs in the bear and so on and so forth, oh, it's so man. tough. Boy, it's, it's a beautiful city, and, you know, I, I love it, bro. Ain't nothing like Miami, nothing. bro, and that's a, that's a beautiful thing about it. I mean, it like you said, there's so many different cultures and so many different backgrounds, so many different hoods and so many different creeds of people that, like you said, it tre it taught you how to be good everywhere you went. So, it, like, Miami was the blueprint for you for this whole music scene, I want to say, because it gave you, like, a, uh, uh, how do I say, like a job resume yeah like you you know this you know that yeah this, i'm good at that i know this like spanish facts. Facts, haitian facts. no matter what it is i can relate to all that shit once i leave facts. and then and then even with the dj because you know miami's so fast and it's 24 hours and you know what right. i mean you kind of like like even with like dj and i feel like you kind of you kind of are like a, a fast pace you feel me you're kind of like as soon as you jump out there you're kind of like in advanced classes you know what i'm saying because just how our nightlife works and everything's so fast and you really gotta, you know, ain't no time to really 
be practicing like they throw you to the fire early. You feel me? At <laughs> least in the strip, at least in the strip club circuit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the music, the music, the women, and the alcohol really fast. <laughs> every day, every day, and then and then we could throw the um, we could throw the powder in there that make them go even fast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, um, you need to fit this now and, and for. For as long as I knew you, and for as long as I did my homework, yeah, you've always been active. Um, where did that come from as a kid? Did you play sports? Or yeah, I played. Well, before we get into that, because I'm gonna give you the whole spill on that. Okay. I just want to flip it, and I want to salute you, my brother, because I've been watching your fitness Appreciate grind, it, man. right? And I see where you came, where you came from, and to where you are now, yeah. right? Yeah. A lot of people don't understand, right? To to be, to be consistent in the gym it's a different mindset right you gotta you gotta have a real almost slash retarded mindset you feel me yeah to be able to put yourself through all that pain and keep going back and keep going back and keep going back so anybody who's in the gym consistently right just the discipline right just the mindset i salute right. you get me so i just want to salute you on your fitness journey man you done turned into a beast I be watching you in there and, and with Willie and doing all the backflips and y'all you know, niggas is the truth, bro. Y'all niggas is the truth. But as far as like with me to answer your question, I, um, high school I played basketball. You feel me? I played I played varsity basketball at Sunset, um, tenth, eleventh, twelfth grade. You feel me? I was a starting point guard, so I was always like you know working out in the fitness, just being active, right? Right. Um, after the basketball kind of faded, cause you know I'm like, I'm five three and a half. You know what I'm saying? Was it, same as me. Same as yeah, me. Yeah, wasn't really <laughs> nobody checking for me on the basketball tip, right? But I, you know, I'm still active. So then, I was always in the gym, just working out. You right. know what I mean? Working out, working out, working out. So I picked up DJing, but I will always stay working out. And then through just being in there, and understanding and passion right because you know I, I found out through music that was my passion right mm -hmm. and to do to get paid for something you love or to get paid for your passion like that's where it's at right so no as I got older, yeah so as i got older and i you know i kind of figured that out through, through the music um i was like damn i'm in the gym a lot bro why not I become a personal trainer? Yeah. You feel what I'm trying to say? Because uh -huh. it was the same correlation to the music. I was like, dog, I listen to motherfucking mixtapes all day. I'm in the club every night. Why don't I be a DJ? So just from being in the gym, right, I, I got the same correlation. I'm like, dog, I'm in here all the time. Why not I just become a personal trainer? So it started, you know, I started working. I would DJ in the day, right, or I DJ two, three times out the week. I got my first job at uh, 25 Fitness in the Grove. I worked the front desk overnight. You get me? Man, so you so started was, yeah. from the bottom, for real. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I did the front desk for about a year. I talked to my manager. I told him I wanted to be a personal trainer. He put me up on how to get the cert. I went and got my cert, and then I never looked back. So then, you know, along with the DJ, I was already DJing. You get right. me? And, and I just picked up the training because I, I figured out passion. I'm like, if I'm going to be in the gym every goddamn day i might as well get paid for yeah, it yeah so that's how the fitness thing came about that's, and that's amazing bro because honestly i salute you and i want to say that that's inspirational because you're doing two passions that you love and they're both one's lucrative and one and another one is lucrative as well but it's also healthy because yes the thing about djing or just nightlife in general it's hard to stay healthy and it's hard to be you know facts and shit, you know what i'm saying so with that kind of mindset of you saying, I, right, I'm gonna be this overnight dude and this party dude, but during the day, I'm gonna be this healthy dude. Bro, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Bro, that's really no. <laughs> <laughs> for real, I've been doing bro. it for so long that, you know, I kind of like, you know, I kind of make it look easy, but it's nah, super hard, bro. bro it's super it hard. Work, and then, bro. not for nothing, no lady, I had to, I had to give up the drinking. Like, I don't even drink no more. I'm fighting, you know bro. what I'm, I'm saying? Dying. I'm fighting. Like, I have, dying, I, have, I, have it, I have it drinking, like, maybe. Maybe three years. I think after the pandemic, Ooh. I kind of stopped. You Good know what I'm shit. saying? Salute yeah, you, bro. Yeah, salute, salute you, bro. But you know, I I kind of had to 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 to, to be efficient in both lifestyles. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, right. especially on the day shift. Like I was, I was DJing day shift, maybe five days a week, right? And mm -hmm. then 
I understood the consumption of alcohol at this level every day. It wasn't going to work yeah, yo, over time. You hear what I'm trying to it say? Listen, I'm living it, and I'm telling you right now, it ain't going to work. Listen, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Like, I've honestly been trying, like, so you know about fitness and yeah. you know some people their weight comes from carbs their weight comes from sugar my yep. weight strictly comes from alcohol bro i could drink and stay swollen for like a week and yeah not, not only that it's hard to get up and go to the gym in the morning if you've been drinking the night before facts so, all right it's a bad habit that i'm really trying to be and i'm not saying i want to go cold turkey or stop completely but i really want to uh. like you know one or two here and there a show here and there but it's hard when you're Lily Willie, too. You know For sure. Oh, I really already know. know. But you know what it is, though? You know what it is, Willie? It's moderation, Correct. my boy. Moderation. Correct. You get me? Correct. Just save it for the weekend or you get me? Shit okay. like that. Yeah, yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. it's baby steps. You got to crawl before you walk. You get me? Definitely but moderation, does. my boy. Definitely, moderation. And then on a deeper level with the fitness, just to kind of um uh finish up your question, you know, I'm Buddhist, right? Yes. So for me, that's my philanthropy to the world. You get what I'm trying to say? Because I know what it is to see somebody who, you know, in the beginning, they can't even put their left before they right, mm -hmm. right? And then you stick with them a month, two months, and then now they're box jumping, deadlifting, or, you know what I mean? But you but you see the, you see the transformation. So for me, I know how powerful that is. So being that I'm Buddhist, right, training for me, it's my philanthropy to the world, right? Mm. I'm giving back, you know what I'm saying? I'm, so so on a deeper level, man, you know, I love it, bro. And it, it's, 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 it's my, my gift to the world, you know what I mean? Bless you, brother, <laughs> bless you, because that, it just, to, just to be a selfless person and say that you're gonna put somebody else first is a deep meaning, so bro, like, like keep it going, keep doing that, bro. Just keep, whatever you're doing, just keep doing <laughs> And you bless, bro, so you know, you know that the blessings keep coming because of the way you walk, you know? For sure, bro, for sure. Um, uh, uh, what was your first introduction to music? Like, when do you remember saying, like, oh, this is cool, like, I listen to, because everybody listens to songs, yeah. everybody hears the radio, but when's that first time you remember saying, oh, shit, I got to get into this? So my first introduction would have to be, I ain't gonna lie to you, through my parents, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, all right, when I was, all right, all right, we'll start with my mom. Mm -hmm. We'll start with my dad, for the most part. Like, my dad had a big, like, sound system, in his basement, like, you know, Jamaican, old Jamaicans do, that's what they do. They collect speakers and you know what I mean? Even if they're not DJs, they just, time. Big exactly, he's got a big sound system. So, you know, every every weekend, Saturday morning, right? Cause my dad lived in DC. So I'm, this is right, middle school, right? When I'm kind of getting into hip hop for the most part. Uh -huh. So my dad used to always go downstairs, you know, drink some T5 and spliff and just play reggae. So it was always reggae blasting in the, you know what I mean, in the house on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna switch it over to my mom now. My mom bought me um, Snoop Dogg, the Snoop Dogg album, Doggy Bobby Style. Style. He bought, she bought me Doggy Style and she brought me um, the Easy E album too, cause oh, Easy E had man. came out in mom, mom, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so she, you know what I mean? And you know, as a shorty, like, she didn't really care about the cuss words and you know, whatever. Right, right, so right, right. back then that was like just super dope. So from her bringing me the Snoop album and the Easy e album, and then my dad just being in the reggae so much, those are like my first introduction to like music and then hip hop and you know what yeah, I mean? So on and so forth. Some, but, some nice introductions. <laughs> Music too, though. She was into her like Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, and you know what I mean? Tanya Stevens, you know, reggae. But um, as far as like with me, like she just brought that home one day. I don't know what, what it was. I don't know if Snoop was the biggest thing at the time. She felt like I had to have it. So she brought the Snoop and the Easy E. And then it was on from there. You know, that was my first introduction into hip hop and music and for the most part. Your mom probably seen something you didn't even I see to bring you home some see that. You shit know, like that, bro. Yeah, because before then, you know, it was like, it was casual. Like I knew about Criss Cross and, and jump right. and you know but i wasn't you know right. i wasn't really but I, I played the snoop album every day easy e album every day and oh. then from there you know it went from there to tupac and jay-z and biggie and then you know what I mean nas wu-tang trick we could go on forever <laughs> yeah um all right so 
what was the first DJ? Because you you are a DJ. So yeah. what, who was the first DJ that grabbed your attention? Like, oh shit, I want to do that. Um, uh, it, it was Khaled and Drama. I ain't gonna lie okay. to you. Yeah, cause all right, look. So I'm gonna give you how my DJ, how DJ came into my life, cause it's like a weird story, like how I got into DJ uh -huh. for the most part. Um, most people they kind of start off like as shorties and they're doing like birthday parties and you know what I mean, bar mitzvahs and weddings. And for me, it didn't happen like that, right? I didn't touch a turntable until after college, right? And the only reason I kind of had to touch a turntable. It's because in Miami, I got popping with the mixtapes, mm -hmm. right? So right. I'm going to give you how this goes. All right. I come back from college. Um, I'm at a crossroads. I'm working at Publix, and I'm selling weed, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of figure out what I want to do. You know what I mean? What's my passion, right. right? This is where I get the epiphany. Damn, music is your passion. Why don't you be a DJ? I was selling weed to a couple of DJs, right, that were already right. on and popping, right? I'll put their names out there, you know, because they was big in the culture. It was um one of them I don't fuck with no more, so I ain't going to say his name. <laughs> um, But DJ Ideal and DJ EFX, right? Okay. So back then around this time, this was the mixtape era, right? So this when Gangsta Grills was popping. This when, you know what I'm saying? All that. Uh, Clu the Clue Tapes was right. popping. K Slade. Everybody June. had mixtapes. <laughs> yeah, everybody had mixtapes. So DJ Ideal... <laughs> And EFX, they were kind of like Miami's number one mixtape DJs mm -hmm. at the time, right? Ideal had a mixtape series called The Bottom, and EFX used to put out instrumental mixtapes, right? right? So I knew these guys from selling them weed, right? I don't want to put them out there, but you know what I mean? <laughs> so one day, so good. It's legal now. <laughs> so, so one day while they copping, they like, hey, you want to come to the studio? And I'm like, hell yeah, get the fuck up out of the trap. And then they had all the mixtapes. Because on top of selling mixtapes, they had a mixtape website, right? Oh. It was called Mixtape Corner. So they sold Gangsta Grills. They sold all the dudes out of Texas, um, Michael Watts, um, Screw. Like, they sold them. So me going to the studio ended up helping them out with the mixtape website. So I, I packaged the CDs for them. You know what I'm saying? I, I baggage, I burn them. Like interning, I just, basically, without even exactly, knowing. Exactly. <laughs> I was interning all the while I'm still selling weed, though, like in the studio, you feel me? Right, right, but right, for right, me, right. it was dope because I was so into mixtapes. I was hearing all the new gangster grills for free. You know what I mean? Right. So, and then, I, and then that turned into me helping them with their mixtapes. So because I was so into music and the music head, they would come get my... If you want to say my opinion on songs, right? Mm -hmm. Damn K, is this hot? Damn K, what you think about this, right? So that turned into like me kind of helping out A and R their mixtapes. Right. Right. So once I didn't help them with maybe two or three, I said, nah, I gotta do my own shit. Right? <laughs> I, got, I was like, nah, like you feel me? Exactly. You know, on, <laughs> so then I'm like, I right, I'm helping these niggas with the mixtapes, I gotta do my own. So I kind of peeped how they were making mixtapes. If, if you remember back in the day with like Southern Smoke and all these mixtapes, right? It was really just the music and then adding their tags right. for the most part, right. or adding their drops on the intros, like say a nigga hosted it, right. right? It wasn't too much if you want to say scratching. Don't get me wrong, niggas still did the scratching, right? But those are my like blend right. tapes. So no, I was putting these the, niggas, the good shit together. Exactly. Like, you're a cook, you're a chef. Exactly. So I would see these niggas put their mixtapes together in Pro Tubes. Feel me? In the Ooh. studio. So they'll just add their drops, add the music, add their, if they have a host or whatever, whoop, 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 um, bounce it, and it'll be a mixtape. So I learned that from them. Bought me my own computer, bought me Pro Tools, got my songs together got my tags i got my host and i put my first mixtape out willie it was called dope boy music volume one that was my first mixtape mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. i took the theme from cocaine cowboys right because cocaine cowboys the dvd was out at the time it wasn't right. the movies yet right right, right? right, right. it was good it was big in the hood the Bootleg you remember, if you remember yeah, yeah. this time, Willie, it was yeah, big yeah, in the hood. Yeah, man. I remember, I, I grew up at Homestead, so the flea market over there. That, and, and That's uh, where I got uh, it from, <laughs> in the USA flea market, yeah, yeah. down there, right? <laughs> See, 
see, not I the know, USA, see, but the um the South Miami one. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's probably still there. All right, they sold it. Right, that's where I got it from. Mm -hmm. So boom, I took the theme of that. I took a couple excerpts. I put out my first mixtape, right? And this is a crazy story, William. I'm going to get to how I got to the, to the DJ. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. It's, it's all going to come together, right? <laughs> so I put out Dope Boy Music 1, right? I took the excerpts from Cocaine Cowboys. All right, my, my, my theme for my mixtape, because at the time, trap music was big. It was Gucci Man, It was right. Jeezy. It was T.I. It was these were the, all the niggas I'm into. So what I did, I took the, the, the dopest um trap music songs that i was into and i'll mix them with um some miami artists so it'll be a a gucci berg ti um trick you know what i mean right, right, and right. i'll just now it's dope boy music so i put out my first mixtape at the time now you got to remember all the flea markets sold mixtapes so you know you were burnt the same thing i was doing for them with their mixtapes distributing them to the to the um little mixtape uh stores and, and flea markets mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i did with mine right so i put out dope boy music and i put them to all the mixtapes stores boom one day i guess he's playing my mixtape in the in the flea market right yeah. this is the Kara city one the producers of cocaine cowboys right happen to be in the flea market oh, why shit. i don't know <laughs> they're in there right? right so they're walking by the store and they hear the excerpts from the movie. Picture is still on DVD now. Right. It came out officially, right? In, in the movies or however, yeah, that was however they put it later out. on. That, that was later, later. Yeah, exactly. That was, later that was way later on. That was way later. Damn, lady, you, you tapped in. Boom. Now listen, bro. We was, <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm 36, bro, so I, I was there. I was you tapped in, in Willie. You tapped in. <laughs> you tapped in. All right, so. I'm going to get to the DJ because I want to be too long-winded. Nah, so, boom. so boom, they hear my mixtape, right? My information is on the back of the mixtape. My dog X, he gives them my mixtape. They end up getting in contact with me. So one day they call me. They're like, um, how you doing? This is, uh, I forget his name, but um, production company was called Rakator, right? He's like, we're from Rakator Productions, right? We're in charge of the, the, the Cocaine Cowboys movie, and we heard your DVD. We heard your mixtape. So now I'm shitting in my pants because I'm thinking, oh, oh God, shit. I'm yeah, I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit, they coming for me. They found me. Right, Liddy? Boom. Um, they like, nah, um, we just want you to come down to the office. We're a fan of it, and we want to add you to the promotion team. Oh, shit. So, boom, shit. I come down. Yeah, I come down to the office. Long story short, short story long, the first mixtape I ever did got into the hands of the Cocaine Cowboys people, and it was a hit in the city. So from there, Willie, I caught the bug. I dropped Dope Boy Music 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going crazy. So by like, all right, Dope Boy Music 9, right? Mm -hmm. I get I get a call from a promoter. He wants to book me, right, right. to DJ. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Hold up. Hold on. Hold on. Because <laughs> you remember, I'm just Pro Tools. Yeah, and yeah, I'm putting yeah, them out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but the blueprint exactly you know, yeah, the yeah. <laughs> but the mixtapes is ringing off Lily and they so the, so I'm like damn I can't really DJ so I'm like all right I'm gonna hit you back so as 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 I'm thinking they're plotting I'm like damn what the fuck do I do <laughs> I googled DJ school right <laughs> I googled you know the hustler me now nah, fuck that. A that's, nigga that, that's that's the words of being legendary once again figuring it the fuck out exactly <laughs> so i googled i googled dj school really what comes up scratch academy right mm -hmm. so i'm like oh shit they really do got it this is on a whim right. i'm like oh shit they really do got a dj school i clicked on it boom my heart dropped because it said new york and i'm like fuck but then i clicked down some more they said locations Next location was Los Angeles. Guess what the third location was? Miami. Miami. Oh, they done fucked I'm up. There. I'm there. They I'm done there. fucked up. I'm there. I'm there. Lady, they done fucked up. They got a DJ school. So boom, I call them up, enroll myself in the Scratch Academy. It was in Wynwood, right? Okay. It was in Wynwood. So um, Scratch Academy, they basically teach you from day one. If you never, ever touch the turntables, right? right. They're going to teach you. You feel me? So now, boom, my mixtapes is popping, and I'm learning 
the fundamentals because I'm going to school for it. Right. So you got to remember, they, they, they do it like classes, 101, 102, 103, 104. From the beginning. You from the beginning. Who's Jam Master J? Exactly. That's what started off. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So now you got to remember too, Willie, I'm getting the fundamentals because I'm catching the edge of um, records. Right before records is coming, um, vanished. Right. In the beginning of Serato, I'm, get, I'm catching the end, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm learning off of vinyl. I'm learning off of vinyl. Boom. So I'm learning. At the same time I'm learning, my mixtapes are going crazy, <laughs> right? Going crazy. So That's now this how the this is how the strip club came into play. So as I'm learning, I'm selling weed, I'm putting myself through DJ school, mixtapes are going crazy. I get a call from Crunch One, right? Who was wow. a big strip club DJ at the time, right? He heard one of my mixtapes. So he hit me up thinking I'm from out of town. Right, so he's right. like, "Damn, I want to um get down with you on one of your mixtapes." So I hit him back. I'm like, "Damn, Crunch, what you want me to do? Pull up because I've heard of him already." Right? right? He didn't know you were from. He ain't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, "Yeah, I'm in Miami." He's like, "Oh shit, you in Miami? Come to the club." He worked at Coco's. Right. Oh, That's what he was the head DJ at Coco's, and at the time he was the head of the Street Connect DJs, right? right. Which was the first DJ coalition in Miami. Not for nothing. 100%, right? He was the head. So boom, through the mixtapes, I hook up with Crunch One now, right? And I'm going to school. He got the clubs on lock. So where am I taking my scratch 101 shit that I'm learning? Right to Coco. Right? right? So right? You, that's, exactly. that's, your, that's, that's like your fucking, that's like, like your practice field. Exactly. Like so you practice yeah, so, but you you certified at the same time, so you like you, yeah, you can't so, fuck up. <laughs> so now, so now, right? One day I'm in the club kicking it with Crunch, right? And you know I'm learning because I want to learn, right? right? I'm going through Scratch Academy, getting the fundamentals, but this is real time DJing. You right. feel me? Real time. So I'm learning. One day Crunch is like, "Hey K, jump on the mic. I gotta go. I gotta go to the bathroom." Oh, and, shit. <laughs> and then it was on from there. You know, I, I, I crept to the mic. I'm talking all soft. And I, you know what uh -huh. I mean? But then I got the bug. So then for me, DJing officially started in Coco's, right? It wasn't no house party. It wasn't no um, you birthday off party. A lot it wasn't of people. no you wedding. You started off where a lot of people were and, trying to get to. Exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. That's like exactly. saying I started but, off. That's I started baseball on the Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> you get me? But it was all through. It was all through the mixtapes, though, lady. Right. You get me? Right. So I got it late. It was. I put out. I was. My mixtapes were booming before I ever touched the turntables. And then because my mixtapes were booming so much, I didn't want to disrespect having DJ in front of my name right. and not being able to do kind it. of do something. Correct. I went to school, I clicked up with Crunch One, and then I never turned back. You feel me? Then I've been in the strip club ever since. God so damn, that, bro. That's where that, so that's how it started for me. I know it's kind of long with No, that, no, but. no, but that, I, listen, I don't even think, have you said that on the interview yet? Yeah, I, I've said it. I've said it. I've said the it on whole, the interview. The whole thing like this? I yeah, I've said it just like that. Okay, I watched three interviews, maybe I watched the one. <laughs> Yeah, I said it on a couple, but I'm able to compress it, you know, because I don't, you know what I mean? Hey, but no, but honestly, that goes to going back to day where you're staying. Like, that, that's why I say, like, my definition of legendary can mean anything. Like, mm. shit, you could be you could be a legendary toilet bowl cleaner. And must be like, oh, well, I don't know what the fuck a toilet bowl. I don't care about no toilet bowl. But <laughs> you don't know what that man does and how much pride he takes into it. So when I said legendary, being a legendary DJ, I met you in person four years ago but they were still maybe 12 13 years behind your belt yeah. like that you yeah. put in working that you know i put in yeah willie yeah, yeah dog facts yeah. that's what i'm saying so so when you said it right it was it was it was really like just real, it was like recognizing yeah, bro, real, bro. Like, it's just real <laughs> recognizing here that's all because I, I i know what it takes for a motherfucker to want something and get it doesn't matter if it's food work passion like, like you could tell. So when you know, you you know when somebody's fucking off and when somebody's not fucking off. Yep. You know what I'm saying? G shit. And you know, G shit. You know, you know it better than anybody being a, a, a trainer for you know. I was just about say, to go I, there. I, really. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't, I didn't eat my last night. Yes, you did, motherfucker. You smell the shit coming out of your pores. Yes, you did. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, listen to me. 
Yeah. So you answered like a bunch of my, my, my question. <laughs> and my number one question that I wanted to ask you, but you answered it, but I want to re re yeah. reiterate it is that you're a digital and vinyl. DJ. Yeah. Both, both. Because I caught, I caught right. the end. I right. caught the end. Like, um, not for nothing. I started on vinyl. Mm -hmm. Like, DJ Ideal. Um, and I was living with another DJ at the time. We were like roommates, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. DJ Ideal, not for nothing, I say his name. We don't fuck with each other no more, but fuck it, Willie. I'm on your show. It was um Stevie J. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah, Stevie yeah, yeah. J, he DJs that live, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we were roommates at the time. Ideal gave us his vinyl set because he, he had switched over all the way. That's gold. He was trying to get rid of oh, his right records. There, it's so gold, he gave bro. us... He gets, so that's how I kind of started on the vinyl, right? right? And then I got on Serato and then and, and CDJs, but I started on the tailwind of vinyl. Don't, I'm kind of rusty on it now because I've been oh, on what? CDJs hey. for a oh, long hey. time, Question. but that's where I started. Do you still have your vinyl? No, nah, I don't have my vinyl, bro. Oh. <laughs> I don't have my vinyl, dog. And I, I'm tripping because it'll be worth so much right now, dog. But not for nothing. Not All right, so look. Money. That's a, just a personal thing, bro. Yeah, it's like I trophies. ended it. <laughs> nah, for nothing. I would have still handed it, but me and Buddy, I ain't going to say his name no more because right. I just said it. Right, right, but me right. and Buddy ended up falling out, and he took the vinyl. Uh, you okay. feel me? So, okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, he got it. You didn't give it up. You didn't give yeah, it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 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 it's a long story. Got you, got you. Yeah. That's what if I know where I would have still had it. <laughs> so, question: How do you and Berg link up? All right, so me and Berg, right back to the mixtapes. All mm -hmm. right, boom. All right, so now, now Dope Boy music is popping in the city, right? And yeah. remember, I told you I, I came up in the Gangster Grills era, right? Right. So I'm like, okay, outside of my Dope Boy music series, which was a collection of different artists, I wanted to focus on one artist. Just how drama did Jeezy, right. just how drama did T.I., just how drama did, you know what I mean? Right, All right. them classic gangster girls. I'm like, I want to do one for the right. city. So I saw, I started Trap Certified. So that was going to be my solo artist mixtape series, a subsidiary of Dope Boy Music, right? right. Boom. Boom. I dropped one. I started with G-Boy and Toe Down, two artists out of Palm Beach. This was back in the day, right? So that was Trap Certified Volume One, that was a hit. So like, um, so the next one, I'm like, okay, I took care of Palm Beach. Now I really got to do it for the crib, right? Mm -hmm. And then at the time, Berg was going crazy, right? This is why I think he dropped Color on Color. He was one of the first niggas in the city with the Camaro oh, yeah, on like 24s. Peak, peak, Berg. You feel me? Like he was yeah. going crazy, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and still is going, today. Yeah, he was going crazy. So what I did. I made an unofficial mixtape on Berg, right? Which was my Trap Certified series. So I took all his dope records that I love, I put them together, you feel me? And then I put out a mixtape, right? Boom. That one went crazy too, right? And then you got to remember, this is on Twitter. So I'm on Twitter going crazy with the links and I'm adding them, I'm adding them, you know right. what I'm saying? Right, so right. one day he's in the street now and he hears a car go by playing the the mixtape, and then he heard my tag, you feel me? So he's like, oh shit, nah, this is, nah, the nigga really doing it. Right. And then him being the real nigga he is, he's like, he reaches out to me on Twitter, he's like, K, this shit is dope. I want you to come and get an official mixtape from me. Cause you gotta remember, this is this was unofficial, right? right. right? right, right he right. was like, nah, you on your shit, come get an official one, right? So he invites me to the studio. And then you got to remember, I'm a big fan at the time because he's one of my favorite, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Dog, right. just going crazy. So he invites me to the studio and we do uh, one of his legendary mixtapes, which was called uh, Strictly for the Smokers. Okay, I remember I, that one. Uh, yeah, yeah all right. So, <laughs> yeah, so he invited me to get an official one and we did Strictly for the Smokers. So while we in there, it was such a connection and I'm like, Bird, I don't know what you're doing, but bro, I want to be official, dog. Like I want to be here. This is right. I want to be live house. Right. And then from then we just stuck together, and it's running on like 14 years now. History. Yeah, History. 14 years. But it was it was through the mixtapes. So the mixtapes got me in the strip clubs. The mixtapes got me to Scratch Academy, and the mixtapes got me linked up with Bird.
and that's the proof that your your work don't lie. Like your shit is good. Yeah. So no matter what, your shit's gonna sell. No matter Back. what, like you got you got the good. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if the street people are watching, you got the good dope. Y'all Facts, go dog. I gotta fuck with it. <laughs> um, he put up he put up uh, a post the other day, and he put um it was last month he, actually. He said, "Yeah, I'm the song that you skipped and found it later on and said that was fire." Do you believe that Iceberg gets the respect he deserves in the city? Nah, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. I mean, he okay, not for nothing. Mm -hmm. He does. And he, I say it's a 50-50, right. right? Those who are tapped in, right, and know of his work, because for me, like, I feel, feel like he's he's the Nipsey slash Gucci man, right, mm -hmm. of Miami, right? Why right. I say that is um, you got to remember Bird started young, right? He started young, 14, 15. So he was one of the first... Miami artists who caught the internet wave, right. the right. MySpace, right. the YouTube, the streaming, feel me? The streaming, streaming but yep. because he was CDs, right? But he was young, so he was he caught the streaming, right? Mm -hmm. So he was a pioneer for Miami music on just so many levels, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it be one of the first niggas on YouTube, first niggas on MySpace, first niggas to understand the internet, first niggas to get his catalog streaming. Right. You feel me? Right. On top of working with and helping so many artists, right? And we could go, we could start with who was the first person to put Carisha on a microphone in the studio, right? Mm -hmm. Bird, you feel me? Who was the first, you know, he was, he was a dunk riders. Like he has so much history and those who know, know, right? And then I'll say, I say it's 50, 50 because at the same time, it's like Miami is such a tough city. They don't want to give him his, his flowers, right. right? The, the older heads or the powers that be, you feel me? I feel like if it was a, and I hate to do this cause they always say Atlanta or Cali, but really and truly, if it was anywhere else, his, Hard work would already have been just, just legendary. Just you know what I'm saying. Right. You gotta right. the same way they revere other artists in other cities, right? You get me. So I say it's fifty fifty. He gets it from those who know, and he's still you know like there's no reason he shouldn't be in in rotation on Miami radio. There shouldn't be. You know what I mean like just say for instance, they just had jazz in the gardens, like mm -hmm. they ain't caught. You know what I'm right. saying like. It's like a 50-50, you know, but we did do Rolling Loud. You get right. me? So it's like, you know what I'm saying? I, I was saying, well, you took the word out of my mouth. It's like, if you know, you know type shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you know, you know. Good, you get me? It's a good comparison because, you know, Nipsey was kind of like that for a while until almost, in, you know, if it's passing because Nipsey was, Nipsey was, Nipsey, but at the same time, right until before he died, he really wasn't getting the. And I'm not gonna lie to yeah. you, I'm gonna say this on camera. Mm. I never really listened to Nipsey like that until facts. he died. Nah, facts. I a didn't. lot of people. And a, a lot, lot of people, people. don't want to, they want to admit it, but me personally, I've heard him. Like, yeah. Don't get me wrong, I heard a song here and there. But to study his music, I never did. I'm really not a West Coast person. Cube is my top West Coast yeah. person, but I really don't listen too much. But. When I when he passed, and I said, okay, well, let me give this time because I got to give this man respect. When I listen to the music, I'm like, oh, crazy shit, I was missing out on yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah, so, and the only reason because I hate to like compare the two, you feel me? But the only reason I, I throw those names out there is for the just the uh, the independent hustle. Right, 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 right. right, 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 right you got to right, remember, right. Berg was the first. You know, a lot of like Empire. Everybody knows Empire. Empire now, mm -hmm. as far as like with the streaming and mm -hmm. uh, Bird was on Empire ten years ago. You feel me? Eight years ago. You get me? God, he was one of the first ever fucking with Gazi, as far as like with the streaming and so it's little shit like that. To whereas I, I, I that's why I give him the comparison. You feel me? Mm -hmm. just, just for being a pioneer for Miami music. You feel me? And then I, I, I say the Gucci Man um, comparison. Just cause so many artists that he done helped or don't work together or you feel me? It's like right. 
I think it's maybe 95% of Miami done either came to the studio, got a song with, a beat from something. Um, Something, 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 bro. Something, something that came through the bird tree. You get me? <laughs> well, yeah, I got to keep working, man. Listen, I, I do. I, I never give up faith in Miami. Honestly, that's why I started this podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm from Homestead. You know, Homestead, Come on. we really don't. Come on, bro, what week. you mean? I used to, I used to, I used to stay in the ranch, and nigga. I know where exactly where you're <laughs> no, at. No, so, what I'm saying is, you know, we ain't got too much voice Come down here. So Come I on, say, I used to stay. I used to stay on 268, nigga. Yeah, you're right there. You're, 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 but but that's why I started the podcast because like I, I figured to myself I said if I can get if I can find a way to be a person where I can put everybody in some sort of room or some sort of connection somewhere and still put on for homestead because I feel like we're still unspoken like when fucking this girl this girl said on national TV <laughs> uh down south ain't part of Dade County like that yeah. hurt bro what the it fuck? do it do hurt <laughs> but you know what I noticed you know what I noticed. I'm literally starting to cut you off because I've lived in both sides, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Pe people who live up here, they don't go down there. And people who live down there don't come up here. You feel me? So it's it's, it's a disconnection. Right. Like right. people up here feel like Homestead is going to Orlando. You feel right. me? People in Homestead feel like coming to Fort Lauderdale or, or Miramar is going that's to- That's why I want to- be the bridge because like i told you see Fact. that that definition of hustle and grind okay i was driving to open locker four and a half days out of a week yes shooting the show i mean Woo! i was doing bro and you know from homestead to open locker that's a all right drive bro all right all right i'm gonna give you one i'm gonna give you one i salute you boy when i was when i was going to see crunch uh -huh. right uh -huh. i was living in the ranger i ain't have a car boy i used to take the, whatever that was to the, the max, train station, the max to the train, the right? max to the train station that day, uh -huh. man. You feel Ooh. me? Get, up, get off, get off over there on 17th. Catch the 17th oh, bus with my laptop, God. nigga. With my laptop, just to go meet Crunch at the day shift, right? When he opened up at 12 and right. sit in there. That that was my grind, bro. I did yep. that three three times, four times a week. But that's why. I say real recognize real Rats. so i know the shit that you've done and that's why i say i salute you for yeah that, i salute you um randomly but i just want to put that out there um how was it meeting change drugs bro because drink change drugs is one of my favorite artists that passed in the past decade so how was it meeting him oh man super dope i met him at um what was the hip-hop festival did he was doing bro he did a uh, hip-hop fest um it was at the Fountain Blue, man. He did it a couple times. So anyway, I forget the name, bro. May I may may have been like a, a one of them hip hop festivals, right, 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 that right, Diddy right. threw uh -huh. down here. That's where I met him at, and we was at the Fountain Blue. So you know he was low key, cause you know like I'm a hip hop head, lady. Like I'm Dade County, Southern uh -huh. rap to the core, you a right? DJ though, you got to but, know your shit. But not for nothing though. I was listening to Mob Deep too. I was listening to Wu Tang. I was listening to to to, to Nas. The same time I was listening to UGK. The same time I was listening. You know what I mean? As like you should. One of my favorite <laughs> albums forever of life is is T O N Y Nori. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> like like I was tapped in too. You get me? Right. For right. the most part. So like um yeah dog like <clears throat> a nigga was tapped in with the with the with, 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 with the music and um. Go ahead. What was your question again? What with, do you got? Chinks. No, no, you good. Oh, Chinks. Yeah. So, so with Chinks now, I was a fan of his music because I was a fan of That's French. You feel French. me? I was a fan of French Montana just from being tapped in, and I right. felt like damn, Chinks was one of them ones. So he was in the cut, just chilling. Right. Because you know he's down south. You know, not you know everybody's going after the big artists. Right. I'm like, right. oh shit, Chinks, what's up? So he saluted me for kind of knowing them, and we, right. you know, right. we chopped it up. I got his info. For like, you know, we chopped it up for like 10, 15 minutes and then we took the right. picture. So that's how I met Chinks and then he ended up, you know, passing. So I not for nothing, that was like, that was a good one, bro. Yeah, for me, it was like, I kind of had to meet him. I was a <laughs> good one and it's just, just the eerie story because I don't want to get too deep into it, but just knowing that there's people out there that his murderer went to his funeral and carried Crazy. his casket, bro. Like, Crazy. Like, I heard, I heard, I heard, um, 
Same thing with Jam Master J. Yes. Well, Jam Master J, his murderer was his childhood friend and his and his godson. Yeah. So, and I heard the man but, went to the funeral too. It's just cold, bro. It's just cold, cold, bro. But you know, it's the world we live in. Listen, yes, sir. Um, how many yo check on my music do you get a day? <laughs> You want to go? To disrespect nobody. <laughs> you want to go there with it? <laughs> I mean, I, we don't need another hour. But you want to go you? there with it? <laughs> well, oh, here, here's a better question. I know you get a lot. Let me ask you a better question. Yeah. What's the best way for them to actually get your attention? Ah, perfect. Uh, um, the best way for me is um, is is come. All right. Most artists come with a gimme, 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 mm -hmm. or I need, 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 need. Right, mm -hmm. bring something to the table to whereas it could work for me and it could work for right. you, if that makes sense. Yes, you get me? Yes, like, all right, and it could be something simple like a post, or I'm gonna pull up to the Anything, day shift. Bro. You feel me? I'm gonna Anything. pull up to the day shift. I don't drink no more, but you know what I mean? Buy your drink, or um, you feel me? Just it's, it's because called most, the most artists when they're yeah, most artists when they approach you, it's like, yo, I need my record played. Give me this, give me that, give me this, give me this, give me that. So for me, if you could like, yo, K, okay, what's up? I got this record, right? But I offer uh, whatever, I offer something. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Like, how's it gonna go both ways for me? You get right. me? Like, I got studio time or or something, you get me? It's even if, it's even it's if, it's even if, sorry to cut you off, really, even if it, I don't take you up on your offer, because with me and music, bro, it's, bro, if I like it, I'm going to play it. You feel me? Right, But right. it's just that approach. If you come with something that we both could bring, bring something to the table in the midst of asking for something, if that right. makes sense. No, 100%. Yeah. Look, you know how many people, and this is not to disrespect anybody, but do you know how many people come up to me? And ask me for an interview, but won't tell me I'll pay for the studio, I'll pay for the editing. You get me? I'll, I'll pay. I'll pay for the cameraman. Like, bro, this shit really takes time. Like, bro, I sit here. Look, no, no, no lie. I sit here and I actually I like shit, bro. Like, see, nigga. Like, 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 you gotta understand. And then you, you want me to pay for your editing? You yes. Want me to pay for your video. You only got and and, and nobody in your town knows that. Cause listen, I give an opportunity to everybody, but nobody mm -hmm. knows you. You don't have nothing that will bring me any significant, and then you want me to pay for your advertisement? <laughs> well, you're not making no sense. <laughs> no sense, kid. It's not making sense. Like even if you came to me and said, "Yo, Willie, yo, fam, like I, I got, I, I got my cousin owns a car wash deal. I'm gonna shoot you some car wash." I'm dead, bro. I, that I, was, I don't respect that, bro. Dude, I, I bro. That more than money. Like, like yo, like fly. yo, dog. I work at Publix, bro. Come through. I get you a sub. You feel me? You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but I respect. I honestly will respect that more than money because it shows me that you try yeah. to do something. Yes, you feel me? Exactly. That's what I said. That you try. Nine times out of ten, I won't even take you up on your offer. But just the the fact you get me that you came with something. Oh no, nah, bro, I got you. What you need? Right. You feel me? Now, so everything else, everything else is so I can't do for you. <laughs> so if your music is trash and you came at me, because that's the next part. Hey. A lot of motherfuckers think that. They're going to do something for you or give you money to play a track, but then expect you to make that track work. Nah, right? nah. And that's <laughs> another sorry, buddy. <laughs> that's another thing. Why? What I always tell artists, like, it's like, cool. All right, you can send me your record and everything. That's cool, right? Mm -hmm. But it's the, the people who put the pressure on me to play it, if that makes sense. Yes, so if your shit is buzzing out there, right, in the streets, you doing your work, I almost have to play it without you giving it to me, if right. that makes sense. You no, get yes. me? 100%. You feel me? If your shit is buzzing, somebody's going to come to the DJ booth. Somebody's going to say, yo, why you not playing so-and-so? Or so-and-so, you feel me? So then it's going to have to be on me. Damn, I'm out the loop. Yep. Let me get on, buddy. Right? right? And that's how it works. Like, you could give me your record all day, and I could play it, right? But I'm going to give you an example. Um... Cause you know I've been out here for a long time, Willie, with this music, right? Hundred percent. The eras kind of done changed, right? When I first started, like as far as like I could just speak for the the strip clubs, right? right. You could play a record, and it'll be some new shit, and a nigga come up to the booth and be like, "Damn, who's that?" Or you get me, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Now, right? 
Everybody's in their phones. Nobody's really paying Nobody's attention. You, you, you get me? <laughs> Nobody. So they like this. They exactly. <laughs> so so, and I'm just speaking on the strip club. So oh. unless you're in the club, right? Doing something, and don't gotta be throwing money. It could be y'all could be deep in a section, right? Unless you're in the club when I'm playing this music, so people can make the correlation that this is your song, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost I don't want to say it's to no avail nowadays for artists to say spin it in the in the clubs. It's almost like uh, you know what I mean? You like you gotta still got to you you got to do more. You gotta exactly. Do more. That's the answer. You got to do, do more. This like it, it's just a a cherry on top. But you got to do way more because nobody's coming to the DJ booth no more like, "Damn, who's that motherfucker you just played?" Boy, that shit is hot. Or you get me or like right. I'm the just internet speaking in the strip clubs. It's you the feel internet me? Era, bro. And it's the internet. You, you you hit it right on the head because it's the same thing. All right, it's the same thing with podcasting. Nobody really is going to sit there unless you like the artist. Yeah. Nobody's going to sit there and watch a 45 minute to two hour interview. Nobody. Fact. Unless you like the artist. Exactly. Now, it takes you to clip the shit apart, take mm -hmm. it together, post this, that, and the other. But what an artist doesn't understand is you pay for what you get. Yeah. So you just paid for an interview. How did how do you expect the interviewer to sit there, <laughs> chop up pieces, post multiple posts, <laughs> multiple in one day, then in two weeks, uh, and they're not they're sitting back doing nothing. Now if you come with me with a big ass budget, you just say, Yo, I got two stacks. Yep. Um I want a full promo run, three stacks, I want a full promo run. You fuck it right. I post that bitch four, five, six times, I'm gonna cut that bitch, I'm gonna Ex Ex all right. right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So people like, people got to understand. And then on top of that, what I always say is, if you ain't got it, you ain't got it. It doesn't matter how good you promote it. If somebody's just not interested, you got to go back to figure out why the person. Remember, because uh, you're the DJ. You're playing the music. I'm the journalist. I'm telling the story. But if you're playing the music and I'm telling the story and it's not catching nobody's eye, then. All right. Willie, I done see, I done see street niggas put thousands upon thousands upon thousands right mm -hmm. into this music into the just the promotions into everything right for a record never to catch for you, you know what i mean you it's, ain't it's, got up, it. it's up to the people if it don't connect with the people bro you can't force it on them you can't you know what i'm saying it just organically has to come you feel it me is. that's all it is bro it has to come bro some people have to you have to understand that it just ain't for you. And it doesn't mean that, okay, so maybe you're not the rapper nobody wants to hear, but you have the passion and the drive to try. Maybe you should get one of your peoples. Maybe you should not try to be that face. Maybe you should go and, and be a manager. You got, and, and live by you got, you got to diversify your palate when it comes right. to that stupid shit, bro. You right. You, right. Like, listen, if I did this for so long and the motherfucker would just be constantly commenting and saying, bro, shut the fuck up. We don't like you. Shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be like, damn, like I ain't doing something right. I may not quit, but I'm gonna be like, I gotta fix something up. <laughs> Are you feel me? Perfect example, a nigga like David Banner. He always wanted to be a rapper, but his beats were popping first. So right. he got his, he got his beats out there, and you know what I mean. So right. on and so forth. So figure it out. <laughs> yeah, you gotta diversify your palate. Uh, hey, going back to the workout. Um, I see that you train. Yo, shout out me. <laughs> Shout out me. Like, I'll be commenting like a motherfucker on his Facebook more than his Instagram. But, bro, that, that's another inspiration, bro. Like, I see that you got him in there. He's killing it. He's doing shit. That, like, I, you know why I like to see that shit? It's because us big dudes, people look at us and they're like, this nigga don't go to the gym. This nigga don't go. I'm, bro, when, we in, when I'm in the gym, I be, people be looking at me, there's no way. There's no way. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be challenging niggas to burpees and everything. How many you want to do? How many you trying to do? Really? I see you, bro. <laughs> How many are you trying to do? The only thing that I have not gone set down yet, and it's honestly because I got to stop fucking off of my weight, is pull-ups. Yeah. And I'm not practicing them. Uh -huh. But shout out to me, bro. Shout out to DJ Me. Like, I see you yeah. got him out there. Yeah, I got him to meet. Me was, me was another one. Like, that's been my brother for years, bro. And how I knew, how I knew it was in him, I just needed to, to 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 give him some direction because yeah. me not for nothing. 
I mean, he's the strip club king. You feel me? Right. So, so, so the mentality, right, of wanting to be great, wanting to be the best. There, you know what I'm saying? There, it's in your blood. Exactly. Yeah. I just had to make him apply it to his body, right, and apply it to the gym. The same mentality, though, because me, strip club king, my dog that ran radio stations. My, you know what I'm saying? He's accomplished so much. So I just had to get that same um that same dog that he has mm -hmm. for all his mm -hmm. other stuff to just put it put it into himself. You feel me? Right. So all all last year, Willie. I see all last year. Yeah, bro, I'm watching him, bro. I'm watching him, bro. Meet meet down a hundred pounds, bro. I'm <laughs> watching him once again. I am what bro. I think I I I try my best to keep up with his videos, and I think I at least at minimum commenting two to three times a week uh, bro even if it's just like a thumbs up or a fire emoji like but that's inspiration bro that's true inspiration they don't you see you know because you're a trainer but a lot of people don't understand how it is like you said to stay consistent on a brutal path and then on top of that you having the handicap of being heavier than everybody else and keeping up with everybody that's, else that's just hard yeah that's, just, that's why it's hard that's why you got you got a great mentor, man. That, uh, shout to Willie. Willie, Willie man, Willie. Willie, Willie the truth, bro. <laughs> you trust. trust. That dude, bro. He, trust, he, he be like, bro. he be like, no, listen, he be like, hey, I don't care about no weight, nigga, get up there and do it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he said, he'll, he'll always end the way, nigga, stop drinking then. Because <laughs> he don't drink, he don't drink. So he be like, stop drinking then, you yeah. won't have that problem. <laughs> All right, boss. <laughs> so, yes, um, they meet, man. Shout out to me. If you have one piece of um, fitness advice to give Killer K, Killer K 10 years ago, what would it be? Um, mm, fitness advice? Fitness Fit advice. Fitness advice. Uh, probably 10 years ago. Um, I wouldn't have went, went so hard on the supplements. Oh, okay. When I first started, I was supplement crazy, like creatine, the way, you know, I got more, as I've grown older, I got more holistic. You right. Know? I'm so, trying that too. You get me? I've got more holistic. So 10 years ago, I would have, I would have kind of eased up on going crazy on the supplements in the beginning. Got you. Got you. Um, what has been your hardest life lesson so far? Hardest life lesson. Oh man, that's a great question. My hardest life lesson would uh, um it would have to be uh, my father passing. You know, my father passed last year around um around Father's Day wow. that weekend. Wow. Yeah, wow. I mean, he passed. So probably just dealing with how to internalize everything and then being strong for everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Right. Probably he's one of my hardest, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you my nigga, I, I share it with you. Like, when I told my mom, because I was the one who had to tell my mom, Dang. right? Even though they've been separated for years, I was the one who had to tell her, right? And when I told her, she almost like passed out, you know what I mean? Right. right. And I had to like hold them, you know what I mean? So that was probably been one of my life, hardest life lessons, bro, to just kind of stay strong amongst just to be strong for everybody right. amongst, you know, it's my father passing and us having to deal with all of that. So that yeah, probably it's, it's like dad clocked on. Dad gave you that jacket to wear. Exactly. Perfect example, my boy. Perfect example. God bless. To hold it down. Yes. God bless, bro. Well, you making him promise, brother. <laughs> don't, 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 don't. If nobody ain't tell you that, I'm telling you that. Nah, I love, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta tell each other that though, bro. G for shit, sure, bro. For sure, bro. It's the, it's Listen, the little I'm, shit like that that keep niggas going. Bro, I'm working on. I'm working. It, I always say this because I'm still working on it, and I, I haven't put all the pieces together yet. But I'm working on the men's health um segment with podcasting. Um, I'm trying to get different men to speak with me on like a mental health and emotional health yeah. situation. Um, I'm throwing it out there. I haven't put the tools yet it's just like a bunch of things on the table that i got to figure out how to build and connect but I, i'm very passionate about men's mental health because um a lot of it gets thrown to the side especially coming from our, our urban up in, upbringing where it's not talked about much yeah. and you're soft and this and the other so i want to like break that because 
there's a lot of mental and emotional distress and distraughtness, and that's why a lot of shit occurs nah, with fact, men. Do it, put me down, man. Let's run it back, because I, I definitely want to get on there and talk about how I want to talk about the correlation between mental health and diet. Yes. And what you're eating. Yes. You I mean, it all, it all goes in. I like feel I a, people, a lot of people, a lot of people skip over that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> bro, listen, just with food, because I, 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 I haven't, I haven't, I don't have a drinking problem, but I have a drinking situation. Yeah. So <laughs> when I tell people with food, you got to think about with food. When you go to a funeral, you eat. When you get a, when you get a job, you, you celebrate with food. On a birthday, you celebrate with cake. Um, you're depressed, you, you eat food. Um, uh, you, you got a raise, you, you go That's... out and eat dinner. So we use food as a drug, just like we use alcohol yep. as well and, and other drugs. Gee, shit. And, and then even on, even, on, even on a deeper level, right? Serotonin, right? Mm. Serotonin, which is in, in it controls your emotions, yes. right? That's the it starts in your stomach, right? It goes up your, your vagus nerve and your spine to your brain, right? Right. But that's what controls emotions. So if in your gut shit is fucked up, how you your think your brain's gonna be fucked up? up emotionally? That's right. You get me? That's right. hundred percent, hundred percent, bro. I mean it's common sense, but like I said, that's a yeah, whole that's hour. It's a whole nother. Just put me down for that show. <laughs> I got you. I, we got to connect with that one. Yeah. Right, so moving forward, I always do this with all my guests, whether it's in the studio or out the studio, I always do the left or the right game, the this or the that, yeah. or whatever it is. So if I say apple and orange, you're going to tell me orange. If I say green or purple, you're going to tell me whatever your color is. So let's start it right off. Pat Riley or Eric Spolter? Pat Riley. Ice Cube or Common? Cube. Eminem or The Game? Eminem. Funk Master Flex or DJ Clue? Can I say both? You can. <laughs> you, can. you gotta give me 10 push ups tomorrow morning. <laughs> uh, the studio or the gym? 10 more push ups. <laughs> the beach or resort pool? Beach. Biggie or Pun? Ten more. <laughs> Ten more. Oh, <dog. laughs> Love from a woman or honesty from a woman? Um, honesty. Okay. Well, you got you got to give me thirty tomorrow. Put that in the story. Come on, I, I'll give it. Yeah, I got you. I do it. I do it. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you. I want to run down um your your th your three most um. This is gonna be quick too, but run down my favorites off of your three recent projects. Okay. Forever Live is um keep going. That's my uh, my, my my one on that appreciate one. Appreciate. Um, um, Forever Live Two, Miami Made, of course. Yes, sir. That's my <laughs> shit. <laughs> and on Puro, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not Spanish. That's why I say it like that. I look Hispanic, but I don't speak no Spanish. Um, mad at me. That's my shit. <laughs> mad, mad at me is my shit, bro. That goes like 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 that hits the nerves right there. That's like yeah, that. For sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that I'm glad that those tracks resonated with you, my boy. Hey, and if y'all watching right now and you're still in here, go make sure you type in DJ Killer K on any streaming platform or whatever it is. You're gonna listen to Forever Live One. Yes, sir. Which is Forever Live, whatever you want to call it. Forever Forever Live Two. Yes, sir. And then his newest shit, Puro. Because <laughs> I'm not Hispanic. And shout out to Bree. Yo, um, Bree. Triple C, man, yeah. Uh, it's a big project we put together. Uh, I'll give you some backstory on that. Um, and that's just back to the grind. So creating Forever Live 1 and Forever Live 2 with my brother Berg, we kind of got a collection of of a sound, right? We got with some mm -hmm. great producers. Shouts out to Rockstar, Davi Soul. And uh, we kind of just took that same kind of formula and then ran, ran breed up through there. You get me? So right. we put... So, so it's if you listen to Forever Live and you listen to Puro, right? It's two different type of projects, right? Because it's two different type of artists, but same production, same production. I feel like same you're production. creating your own kind of genre of music. <laughs> That's what we're trying to do at the Live House, man. We <laughs> really um trying to create a sound. You feel me? As opposed, that's what we really trying to stand on is creating a sound. You know what I mean? Like same way. Cash Money had a sound. Uh, right, right, right. That boy had a sound. Um, Death Row had a sound. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Yeah, so really that's what we be kind of like focus on, man. Just really the production and and just just you know creating a sound, live house it's, sound. It's working. <laughs> It's working. Like we we listening, we listening. Don't I, I know sometimes like I mean I know you see way bigger numbers than me and you're in rooms with people that are on higher levels, but I know all of us are guilty for sometimes feeling like disencouraged because you know we may not that but you know who's listening because you see, but you do understand there's a lot more people that are listening that you don't even know or think that they're listening. Nah, you know what I'm saying? I know I see it every day, like I be in the gym and you know, because when I'm in the gym, I'm training mode. Right. But somebody would come tap me on the shoulder. Damn, boy, I know you from somewhere, boy. <laughs> I you somewhere, boy. You feel me? They'll come back 10 minutes later. Killer K, yeah, boy, I was you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> let's go. Keep it going. Um, What has been your biggest challenge as a DJ so far? Biggest challenge as a DJ? Um, Let's see. My biggest challenge, I'll give you two. The first one was talking on the mic, right? Mm -hmm. Coming from the strip club culture, right? Your, your mic game is really every, like your presence on the mic. You have to be a real presence. You mm -hmm. feel me? So in the beginning, you know, like I said, I didn't have no, you know, teaching for the most right. part. So in the right. beginning, it was real. Like I didn't even want to talk. I'll have somebody DJ and, you, I mean, I have somebody talk while I DJ. Like, I was kind of scared of it, right? Mm -hmm. But it was just over the years, I kind of just, like, fuck it, man. I got to talk. Just stand in the paint with it, in the paint every right, day. Right. Just talk. Right. Now, I feel like that's one of my strengths now. You feel what I'm trying to say? As opposed to, like, scratching and mixing, like, just having a presence on the mic. And then um, another one would be... Uh, 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 not being or trying not to get pigeonholed as a strip club DJ. Mm. You feel me? You feel me? Because for the most I've seen you break out of that in the past. Yeah, I, I know exactly because I, 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 I and as of late, I'm con I'm consciously just trying to make an effort. You feel right. me? Because working, yeah, you're doing it. <laughs> they'll just they'll just plug you in there like, boy, all you know is the strip club. Boy. You feel me? You can't you can't get off on no '90s R&B or. You can't come over here with the Afro beats, or you can't. You ain't got no reggae tone in your crate. You know what I'm saying? They forgot you Jamaican. Yeah, and I'm Jamaican. I say they forgot you Jamaican. All right. You, you, you feel me? The dance hall and all this shit. Come on, man, chill out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So out, yeah, man. that'll be it. Them two, the microphone, and just trying not to be pigeonholed. All right. All right. Um, where do you see the music scene in the next five years? Because five years is really like 20 years and the way things move these days. You speaking uh, generally or the Miami? Generally, just generally, just generally. Um, I see it getting back to uh, real lyrics. Good. When I wanted to hear that from you. When, <laughs> when I say real lyrics, I mean, I mean lyrics of substance, lyrics that really mean something, right? Right. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? For the most part, I see it going back there because it's almost like, it's too much of the other stuff, right? Yeah, and yeah. I'm not hating on the other stuff. You know what stuff I'm talking about. Just right, the, right, right. I'm just right. a low vibrational, not really talking about nothing, trying to kill your ops, fucking on your baby daddy. Like, you know what I'm saying? That kind of narrative is too much. You feel me? It's, there's no balance. So I feel like in the next five years, you're going to have to come with some real shit to cut through. If that makes sense. You're going to have to come with some substance. You're going to have to come with some bars. You're going to have to come with some high power production just to kind of cut through all of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? joke. I joke about it, but I always, you know, you know, I'm a wild dude sometimes. Yeah. I'll I be, I be actual with it sometimes, but I'll be like, bro, there's only so many people you can kill and so many niggas you can fuck. Because, you know, the females only talk about fucking niggas and this, that. And niggas is only talking about killing, killing. So there's only so many people you can kill and fuck. So what do you got to do next after that? Like, <laughs> I mean, you, you can't kill everybody. <laughs> so, and, and if you keep killing, you're going to end up going to jail. Exactly. I mean, look what Atlanta's going to. Atlanta's going to have the fucking city being arrested. You know, so. You know, yeah, so I really feel like 
in the next five years, that's what it's gonna get back to, man. You know what I mean? Just you know, real, real, real substance in 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 what's being presented in the music, as opposed to just getting in the booth and talking about anything. Good shit, and it's good to have a a pioneer <laughs> tell us that. Yeah, we we have hope. We'll be back. Um, we got to Willie because only only the things of substance really kind of last if if you pay attention to it. Like think about all the all the all the the Tupac songs, the Biggies, the the Jay Zs, the whoever, like the stubs of substance, is what stands the test of times. The music that kind of taught you something stands the test of time. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. We got our, you know, back that ass up and all them well, classic. It's cool. But, it's cool to be ignorant sometimes, but you got, <laughs> that's you got what a message. <laughs> that's what really stands the test of time, dog. Right. Truth, righteousness. Um. Um, you know what I mean? Things of the high vibratory kind of realm, if that makes sense. Going back to like you said, balance, brother. That's yep. all it is. Like exactly. we could do some, we could do some fuck shit. We could say some fuck yeah. shit here and there, but exactly. we gotta have a message on the other exactly. side. So somebody exactly. can know you could that tell them you, done, you could, you could tell them you done killed about a hundred people, but also talk about the paranoia you go through every day having to watch your back. That's right. Talk about you know what I'm saying, shit like that. The balance of it. Right. <laughs> Um, and one more question before we close out. Um, all the DJs, or most DJs in your caliber, usually know the next big thing or the next big artist or what's popping at the moment. Who should we keep our eye on that's coming uh, up? Coming up. Um, if you had to say anybody. I'm going to say my dog, Bushy B. Ooh, shout out to Bushy B. I fuck with Bushy, Bushy B. I tried to get an interview with Bushy I B, man. If I can set it up, bro. I'll see if I can set it up. I, I tried. No, I'm, I'm going to pull that car. First, I got to get you in the studio, and then I'll ask you after that. I got I got to work my way up the chain, you know what I'm saying? And I still need an in, in studio with you, but I did. Uh, I'm just saying it because you know him, and we're on yeah. camera. I shot him a message. Yeah, watch out for Bushy, <laughs> man. That boy a real star. For sure. For sure. Real star. For sure. Talented. Super talented. Humble. Even though I don't like saying that word, but super, super, super talented. I fuck with Bushy. I fuck with mm -hmm. many. Mm -hmm. Um, I gotta get, get you in a studio interview, so we gotta plan that. I, I want to shoot that over there in your place, so we get that LH in the background. Yeah, yeah for I'm, sure. I'm gonna give a Robbie. Um, uh, after we talk here, we'll get a date. Cause uh, yeah. are you still running? Are you still running promo on Breathe? You and Breathe? Yeah, we still. Hell yeah, we got. We about to drop the. Um, we just shot a video, rejuvenated. So we about to drop the video, directed by Rob Day. Shout out, to, shout out to Robbie, man. He shot um, he shot some content for us. Okay, shout out That's my brother, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. He shot, shot um. I want to believe it was, damn. I think it was maybe the Forever Live album release. He shot. Uh -huh. He came to the office with us and and turned up. You know what I mean? So shout out to Robbie, man. And he gets quality work. Quality work. Quality work. I quality work. He, oh, he got he got missing on me. I got to talk about it, but it's all good. No, no, no. We gonna talk about this. We so make it yeah. happen. I'm gonna tell you right now. I don't give excuses for nobody, but I can tell you that this man does not stop working. So that's something that probably happened, but Good. I don't put another excuse for a man. Great energy. Great energy. For sure, man. That's one of my, that's, that's one of the few people that have been with me. You know, honestly, I'm going to tell you right now the truth. He's the reason of the revamp. He, mm. he reminded me, he's like, bro. You, you good at something stop fucking off like we need that kind of energy out right. there we need he says you know you you actually read and, and call people's friends and mothers and fathers to get answers to ask no. people in an interview like who does that shit real authentic journalism bro That's right journalism. right so he's like bro i can't i can't let you get sell your ass so <laughs> definitely but no i want to do i want to do an interview you and read in the studio um let's get some promo for that we could do that whenever you're ready man because we 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 pushing Pure Row all year, bro, till we drop Pure Row 2. All right, bet, bet, bet. All right, so where can the people find you, your music, your videos, your mixtapes, all that shit? Where can they find you? All right, first off, man, uh, before we do anything, I don't know if y'all can see my shirt. Uh, I want y'all to get ready for that big concert. Need um, some light. Put that light April on 28th, over. the uh, Never Give Up Tour, James L. Knight Center. Um, it's Boosie, Plies, Berg. Um, Major Nine, Greasy, um, Crazy. Shouts out to Space Marketing, April 20th. Y'all get ready for that. And then as far as me, man, um, at DJ Killer K305 underscore 
on Instagram at DJ Killer K305 on Twitter. Um, DJ Killer K, K I L L A K. Um, just put that on any streaming platform, bro, and then you're gonna, you're gonna see the music. Um, I'm on YouTube, just DJ K I L L A K. Just pull it up, bro. I'm there, I'm everywhere. Oh, yeah. That's gonna be a lit ass, I mean, lit ass yeah. concert shit. Yeah, bro. I'll try to see if I get you some passes, girls. Willie. Listen, that's me and my girl's anniversary. I was like, yeah, okay. be in there. She loves okay, it. Okay. Like yeah. yeah, it's going down. <laughs> James L. It's called the Never Give Up Tour. This is actually, uh, I don't know, for um, if you've been following Berg, you know what I mean? You kind of yeah, know, I, but this is gonna be I've seen, uh, seen it. Yeah, we done did Atlanta. We did Jacksonville. We did Tampa. Um, yeah, Atlanta, Jacksonville, and Tampa. So it's great to come home and do it at the crib. Hell yeah. Well, if you get media passes, let me know. But I just might buy my tickets anyway. Okay. If I get the media pass, I'm there. But if not, I'm going regardless. Fuck Either me. way, bro. I got <laughs> Either you. Either way, I'm there. Yeah, so y'all get ready for that big concert, man. And uh, Forever Live 1, Forever Live 2, Puro on all streaming platforms. Um, Just Google me, man. DJ Killer K. And before we close, shout outs. Who do you want to shoot out before um, we close? Shit, I want to shout out first off everybody who took first. I want to shout you out, Willie. Um, you, for having me on your platform. I want to shout out everybody who took the time to uh tune in on the live tonight. Shout out to y'all and um, just shout out to uh, everybody who's helped me along my path of getting Amen. where I, of getting to where I'm trying to go. Everybody who's helped me along my path It's too many people to name. You feel me? But I don't want to. Um, single out somebody and forget right. somebody. So I'll just right. shout out to everybody who's contributed from the littlest to the most on helping me to where I've been trying to get to when it comes to the music, when it comes to the fitness, when it comes to just life period. We all exist in relation to one another, Willie. So you can That's never right. feel like you did it by yourself in anything you do in life. You get me? So, right. so shout out to everybody. Man, shout out to my brother to Debo too, man. I just seen Debo check in. Debo, what's up, man? For sure. There's a couple people that checked in. If you missed this interview, you just jump it in now. I'm going to be putting it on YouTube. I'll send the link to you tomorrow when we edit and all that and get everything going. But I appreciate you again, Killer K. Like I said, in the beginning, four years ago, I'll keep saying you a legend, my nigga. Keep going. Keep rocking. Keep giving hope to everybody. Keep giving out good fucking energy, good music, and... Just don't stop, bro. Just don't stop. There's people out there. That nah, stop, really, I, I can't stop, man. I can't stop. I'm on a mission. I really got a purpose, right? And just really through the music, just who I am as a person, man. Anybody who comes in my vicinity, man, I just want to raise their vibrations. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be through the music, through fitness, or just, you know what I mean? Just a simple conversation. You know what I mean? Anybody who comes into my vicinity, my surroundings, into my environment, dog, I just want them to leave, you know, on a higher vibratory level than they was before they met me, if that makes sense. And that's why you keep winning, my nigga. We out. <laughs> Love, baby. <laughs> Love, G.